Chet had such a way of giving his undivided attention to each musician that was in his room with him. Right. Yeah. Just one more thing, quick. Um, I remember I redeemed myself for him, <coughs> with him, after having froze when I was trying to play for him the first time. And I said, all right, Chet, I can do this now. I got a trick I want to show you. And he had recorded Caravan on his very first LP back in 1954. Mm -hmm. And he used... Uh, a tape echo machine. He used an amplifier with a tape echo right in it. Uh, I've got one here, a stomp box, and it sounds like this. Hear the echo come back at me? Okay. I loved that sound, because when he played Caravan, it sounded like this. Like camels going across the desert, you know? Hey, the box but, is But off. you didn't know that then, right? I didn't know that. That's <laughs> right. I'd never seen one of these things. I just figured he'd play in all those notes. I trusted him, you know. <laughs> so I learned them all. <laughs> I just sat with the record until... So here's what Chet was playing. And here's what it sounded like when I figured out how to do the echo. <laughs> of course, Chet hasn't used up as many fingers as I have yet. So he goes on and plays the melody on the top. He looked at me across the desk, and he took his cigar out of his mouth, and he leaned forward, and he said, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and we left. John picked me up after, afterwards, and he had been there. He'd heard that last yeah. part, you know, and we yeah. got back out in the hall, and John said to me, did you see how excited he was? Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's pretty good was like rave reviews from anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. It was wonderful. I remember you telling me, too, that, uh, like, Windy and Warm was one of the first. Did you was the first thing you heard him play on yep. TV? Okay. That was the very first one. Ch uh, Chet played on the Jimmy Dean show back in 1964. I just turned 13 or 14, something like that. I don't know what, what I was. But anyway, here was. Uh, and no DVD to catch it, huh? No DVD, <laughs> no VCR, no nothing. There was, the show was rerun six months later. Oh, great. And yeah. six months later, I was ready with one of those little open reel tape recorders, the <laughs> ones you used to send living letters to. You remember that yeah. stuff? And I, we, we got it, and then I learned it from playing the tape. And this is windy and warm, the way Chet played it back then. Oh. Yes. Where'd that go? Yeah. <laughs> I'll take the easy route this time.
Um, thank you very much. Thank you. One of the things I, um, I still miss uh, now that Chad is gone, I, uh, I'll work up something new and I'll want to grab the phone and say what time you're going to be in your office because I loved you know, running down there and uh, playing him something he hadn't heard yet. And uh, he would always watch and then he would say, how are you doing that? And let me do that. And he would, you know, steal whatever he could and leave the rest, you know. For <laughs> he always said, said something about if you steal something, he said to disguise it so that nobody can catch you later, you know. So. But if I could make that phone call today, I'd like to play him. Uh, he ain't heavy. He's my brother. Yeah. So I, since you guys are all here today, that's and and he's here with us. I think maybe I can play a little something for Chet. Something I would run to his office and play for. He ain't heavy. He's my brother. Thank you. I, uh, I'm going to bring uh, Muriel Anderson up here. Uh, Muriel and I met because mutual friends kept introducing us. Uh, and finally, I drove up to Chicago, and then she gave me a lift on up to Milwaukee to a guitar festival. And during that time, we became acquainted, and, uh, and I found out what all she could do, which is like practically everything. I think, I think anything with strings, right? You know? <laughs> and some things without strings, yeah. Well, I always like to learn other instruments just for fun. But yes. Guitar is yes. the only one I do for, for real. Well, and you, you, uh, you knew uh, Chet's brother-in-law. Right. Uh, one of the instruments I took up just for fun was a mandolin. So I took mandolin lessons from Jethro Burns out in Evanston, Illinois, when I was going to DePaul University uh, up in Chicago. So I'd take the train every, every week. And one day I picked up the guitar and I played a, an arrangement I was working out of Nola for Jethro, and he said, "Ah, oh. I said, well, you got to meet my brother-in-law." And it turns out that Jethro Burns and Chet Atkins married identical twin sisters. So the next time that uh, Chet came to Chicago, Jethro made the introduction, and I had a hotel gig that night. I wasn't playing concerts yet; I was only playing this one hotel, and 
And so I uh, got him on the phone. I said, I'm sorry, I can't come to your concert at Orchestra Hall, and you know, I've got to, I can't get out of my gig. And he said, well, what time's your gig over? over? And, and he said, well, my gig's over about the same time. So he, he talked about both of our gigs in one sentence like that. <laughs> and uh, so he said, why don't you just you know, you know, meet up? And, and uh, so after, uh, after I finished the hotel, we just met up and uh, played some, I played some tunes for him. He played some tunes for me. And, and, and I, I told him, well, this, this is a tune I, I learned from your record. And I, I played uh, Wheels in, in the key of A, the way I, I heard it. And he listened all the way through. He said, that's very nice. Uh, I play it like this. I put a capo on the second fret, and I, I play it in, in a G tuning. Like this. And all of a sudden, it just sounded a whole lot better. and It was a whole lot easier to play. <laughs> <laughs> so I learned the whole thing wrong. And he was... Uh, so he said, well, here, I'll, I'll send you a tape for some things you can play at your hotel gig. And I said, like, that's not really going to happen, right? The greatest <laughs> guitarist in the world is not going to send me a tape of things to play at my hotel gig. Well, a few weeks later, I got a tape in the mail. And all, all tunes that he recorded, especially for me, in his basement. And a lot of those I recorded on my Heartstrings uh, re recording. It was a cassette and later CD. And uh, so we and I started sending him tapes back of songs I was writing, things I was working on, and he sent me tapes. So we did that for a while until I started coming to Nashville and hanging out at the office and talking to Clarissa, his secretary, until finally he'd come down the stairs and said, "Hey, okay, I'll show you something now." <laughs> until he broke down and showed me something, and you know, eventually I just moved to Nashville. So. Uh, yeah, well, I'll play the tune that uh, that introduced me to Chet, and I'm doing it here on my harp guitar today. I just worked it up on the harp guitar, so here I'm playing something new for you. Um, uh, I usually play it on a guitar like John's, uh, but uh, I'll play it on this and improvise on it a little bit with the uh, extra sub basses and super trebles here. This is Nola. <laughs> <laughs> 